You've all experienced the progress of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is nothing but digital brains inside large computers. That's what artificial intelligence is. Every single interesting AI that you've seen is based on this idea. So we've heard a lot about artificial intelligence. Uh, I've actually been involved with AI for 61 years, which is a record. So I've been actually monitoring uh, the growth of computation, uh, which is right here. I spent like 45 years on this. Uh, and as you go up the chart, it, it represents exponential growth. Uh, you might think that someone was in charge of this. Gee, we've done this much, it's in a straight line, let's get uh, our next computer to be right here. But no one was aware of it. No one even knew that this was happening for the first 40 years. Uh, I discovered this 45 years ago. Uh, I had various reasons to feel it would continue at this pace. In 1939, uh, that represents 0 0.00007 calculations per second per constant dollar. At the upper right-hand corner, you've got uh, a Google computer, which was uh, 130 billion calculations per, per second. And recently, NVIDIA just came out with a chip which is half a trillion calculations per second. So this little chart represents a, a growth of 75 quadrillion fold increase. That's why we didn't have large language models in 1939 or even three years ago. We did have something called large language models. They didn't work very well three years ago, began to work two years ago. We've seen the tremendous progress that's happened in the last two years. Uh, in 1999, I was asked to make a prediction of when would we see AGI, artificial general intelligence. And so I, I figured that this chart would continue, which it has. And I figured we'd need about a trillion calculations per second. Uh, to do AGI, so I estimated 2029. Um, that was met uh, with a lot of skepticism. Uh, Stanford had actually been monitoring my predictions. They called an international conference to talk about my prediction, and hundreds of AI scientists came from around the world. Um, and they agreed that, that it would happen. We would achieve AGI, but not within 30 years. Uh, the estimate was 100 years. And I've talked to actually some of the people who were there who said 100 years then, and they're basically agreeing it's gonna happen very soon. Musk says it's gonna happen in two years. It's not an unreasonable position. Other people saying three or four years. I'm sticking with five years, but uh, it could happen soon. But it's, everybody agrees now uh, AGI is very soon. As researchers and engineers continue to work on AI, the day will come when the digital brains that live inside our computers will become as good and even better than our own biological brains. Computers will become smarter than us. We call such an AI an AGI, artificial general intelligence when we can say that the level at which we can teach the AI to do anything that, for example, I can do, or someone else. So, although AGI does not exist today, we can still gain a little bit of an insight into the impact of AGI once it's built. It is completely obvious that such an AGI will have a dramatic impact on every area of life, of human activity, and society. And I want to go over a quick case study. This is a narrow example of a very, very broad technology. The example I want to present is healthcare. Many of you may have had the experience of trying to go to a doctor. You need to wait for many months, sometimes, and then when you do get to see a doctor, you get a small very limited amount of time with the doctor. And furthermore, the doctor 
being only human, can have only limited knowledge of all that's all the medical knowledge that exists. And then by the end of it, you get a very large bill. <laughs> well, if you have an intelligent computer, an AGI, that is built to be a doctor, it will have complete and exhaustive knowledge of all medical literature. It will have billions of hours of clinical experience. And it will be always available and extremely cheap. When this happens, we will look back at today's healthcare similarly to how we look at 16th century dentistry. When you know when they tie people with belts and then have this drill, that's how today's healthcare will look like. And again, to emphasize, this is just one example. This is just one example. AGI will have dramatic and incredible impact on every single area of human activity. So, I have another book coming out. The singularity is nearer. <laughs> and I've got about 50 graphs in there. Um, I can't explain it right now, but if you talk to me later, I can explain these charts. But it basically shows uh, that, a, that artificial intelligence is going to take over everything. Um, uh, the, the amount of... <laughs> The amount of money that we make right now is 10 times greater in constant dollars than it was 100 years ago. We were very, very poor 100 years ago. There was no government programs. Um, so we we're much richer than we were then. And the, the movement, not only of computation, but every single technology uh, is done by creating, taking the latest thing we've created and making the next one. We take the latest chip and we use that to create the next one. Um, we have greater wealth, as I said, that leads to better education, leads to better doctors, leads to healthy people, leads to more global wealth. All of these things work together. AI supercharges everything. So I could talk about each thing as being actually revolutionized. I think the most interesting thing is actually medicine. There are a lot of people who are experts in AI who are against what's happening, and they're very nervous about it, and they think it's going to wipe us out. Um, but people tend to get diseases which are, which are threatening to them, uh, and what's going to happen, people are going to get diseases, and AI is going to come up with a cure uh, very soon, uh, which will lead to a great deal of appreciation. Um, People say that AI is not creative. It's very creative. You can actually put together p possibilities that might work. For example, Moderna was trying to create their COVID vaccine. They actually put together a list of different mRNA sequences. Now, what would we do in the past? Someone would come in and say, well, okay, there's several billion. Let's try this one. Or maybe they'd pick three. You can't... Uh, do a, a clinical test on billions of different possibilities. But that's exactly what they did by simulating the reaction. And that took two days. So in two days, they created the Moderna vaccine. Uh, and that is still on the market. It's been the best vaccine. And it was done in two, day, two days. And we're going to do that with every other thing. There's some very promising cancer cures that are out there, which AI produced. Uh, they're looking very promising. Uh, the next few years is going to be remarkable for medicine. We had 190,000 proteins done by people uh, in 2022. 2023, AlphaFold 2 did 200 million. Basically, every protein and, and how they fold, uh, every protein that's used in humans and, and every other species on Earth uh, done in a few months. Uh, and we're going to be able to go through uh, cures for diseases at the same rate. So we're going to simulate trials digitally. Uh, it'll be much safer. It'll be a million times faster. Um, and by the end of this decade, as we go into the 2030s, we're going to achieve a new milestone. It's called longevity escape velocity. Let me say that again, because you're going to be hearing a lot about that. 
longevity, escape velocity. Right now you go through a year and you use up a year of your longevity. However, scientific progress is also progressing, which is actually bringing us back. It's giving us cures for diseases, new forms of treatments. So right now you're getting back about four months. So you lose a year, you get back four months, so you're losing eight months. However, the scientific progress is on an exponential. It's going to get faster and faster. And as we get to the early 2030s, let's say between 2029 and 2035, depending on how diligent you are, uh, you're going to get back a full year. So you lose a year, you get back a year. As we actually go past that point, you'll actually get back uh, more than a year, and you'll go backwards in time, uh, which would be cool. Um, <laughs> Now, some people are concerned we're going to run out of resources. Uh, and actually, if we just went ahead and didn't make any new resources, we would run out of resources, like energy, for example. Uh, but this is not happening in a vacuum. Uh, AI is revolutionizing everything. For example, we only have to connect um, one part in 10,000 of the sunlight that falls on the earth to meet all of our energy needs. It's plenty of headroom. Uh, and that's growing exponentially, and we'll achieve that within 10 years. And that's also growing exponentially. When you see impact this large, you may wonder, gosh, isn't this technology too impactful? And indeed, for every positive application of AGI, there will be a negative application as well. This technology is also going to be different from technologies that we are used to because it will have the ability to improve itself. It, it is possible to build an AGI that will work on the next generation of AGI. The closest analog we had to this kind of rapid imp technological improvement when the Industrial Revolution was, uh, has, has taken place, where humans, the material condition of human society was very, very constant. And then it was a rapid increase, rapid growth. With AGI, something like this could happen again, but on a shorter time scale. And then furthermore, there are concerns around if an AGI ever becomes very, very powerful, which is possible. Maybe it will want to go rogue, being that it is an agent. So this is a concern that exists with this unprecedented, not yet existing technology. And indeed, you look at all the positive potential of AGI, and all the concerning possibilities of AGI as well. And you may say, gosh, like where is this all headed? One of my motivations in creating OpenAI was, in addition to developing this technology, was also to address the questions that are posed by AGI, the difficult questions, the concerns that we raised. In addition to working with governments, and helping them understand what is coming and prepare for it. We are also doing a lot of research on addressing the technological side of things so that the AI will never want to go rogue. And this is something which I'm working on as well. But I think the thing to note, because AI and AGI is really the only area of the economy where there is a lot of excitement, a lot of investment, everyone is working on it. There's a huge number of labs in the world trying to build the same thing. Even if OpenAI takes these desirable steps that I mentioned, what about the rest of the companies and the rest of the world? And this is where I want to make my observation about the force that exists. And this observation is this. Consider the world one year ago, as recently as one year ago. People weren't really talking about AI, not in the same way at all. What happened? We all experienced what it's like to talk to a computer and to be understood. The idea that computers will become really intelligent and eventually more intelligent than us is becoming widespread. It used to be a niche idea that only a few enthusiasts and hobbyists and people who were very into AI were thinking about. But now everyone is thinking about it. And as AI continues to make progress, as technology continues to advance, as more and more people see what AI can do and where it is headed towards, then it will become clear just how dramatic, incredible, and almost fantastical 
AGI is going to be and how much trepidation is appropriate. And what I claim will happen is that people will start to act in unprecedentedly collaborative way out of their own self-interest. It's already happening right now. You see the leading AGI companies starting to collaborate, for a specific example, through the Frontiers Model Forum. And we will expect that companies that are competitors will share technical information to make their AI safe. We may even see governments do this. For another example, at OpenAI, we really believed in how dramatic AGI is going to be. So one of the ideas that we were operating by, and it's been written on our website for five years now, that when technology gets such that we are very, very close to AGI, to computers smarter than humans, and if some other company is far ahead of us, then rather than compete with them, we will help them out, join them, in a sense. And why do that? Because we feel, we appreciate how incredibly dramatic AGI is going to be. And my claim is that with each generation of capability advancements, as AI gets better and as all of you experience what AI can do, as people who run AI efforts and AGI efforts and people who work on them will experience it as well. This will change the way we see AI and AGI. And that will change collective behavior. And this is an important reason why I'm hopeful that despite the great challenges that's posed by this technology, we will overcome them. Thank you.